Get your authorized version of the scriptures, please. And follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at. Quite a thumbnail, isn't it? Yeah, about that thumbnail. Follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures, please. Getting back on track with what we need to be focused on. Daniel chapter 7, just a couple verses here to start. Verses 3 on to verse 6. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings, was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the earth of it, between the teeth of it, excuse me. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. And after this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. And Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, the name of blasphemy, singular. Hmm. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, Satan, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. You zoom in on that thumbnail of that thing that's whatever that is, um, which is a guardian of Satan's United Nations, okay? Um, you will you look at it, it's got feet like a bear, okay? It's got um, scales on it. It's very, very creepy. Given on to uh, Satan's United Nations um, from Mexico, actually. But, uh, I mean, if you actually look at it, it's, it's very, very creepy looking. Very creepy looking. And let's read verse 2 again. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. See, it's the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. One, two, three. Three persons that make one God. Oh, you don't say. And there's your trinity there, you Trinitarians. Yeah. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there were, was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Hmm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of 
in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, it says here in verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And nations. Hence the United Nations. Satan's United Nations. Which is basically there to be the the platform, the, um, the stage where that man of sin, the son of perdition, will at first come to light. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be heavily yoked with the Vatican. Okay? Absolutely. Okay? But you also got to remember, you also have to remember that the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is still on the earth. These things cannot happen yet until we, the church of the living God, get redeemed for the time of Jacob's trouble. The purchase, uh, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? But the United Nations, the United Nations is a tool of the devil. Like I said, it's going to be something where that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to use initially to be broadcast, to showcase, it's like, here I am, I believe, okay? I'm going to be looking here now in um, The Secret Terrorists by Bill Hughes. I'm going to be looking at a little bit of the uh, aspects of the United Nations and the failed first attempt, the League of Nations, okay? Now, you got to remember about Mr. Bill Hughes. First of all, this book, if you can get this, I do highly recommend that you get this. Um, his work on the Jesuit order is very good, very good. And what we are going to be looking at can be not only backed up by Mr. Hughes, but also by Mr. G Eric John Phelps and several others out there that can verify the facts about the League of Nations and the United Nations and stuff like that. Problem with Bill Hughes is he's a Seventh-day Adventist. And last, as I remember, Seventh-day Adventists um, are not dispensational, as I understand it, but uh, they believe that the mark of the beast is the is Bob's wafer cookie and uh, the ashes on the forehead, okay? That's what they believe. Last that I checked, and I've, you know, got to remember, Seventh-day Adventists, they really mess it up when it comes to the book of Revelation. But nonetheless... Going to be reading and sharing some stuff with you. Oh, I just took that out. <laughs> I had that marked in there. One second. All right, sorry about that, brethren. This book, by the way, the contents is very good. This is very poorly made in and of itself. But where my finger is right here, we're going to start reading from there. Where my finger is, we're going to read from there. Where my finger is right here down. We're going to read this entire page here on this side, okay? Go ahead and pause that and read it. Then we're going to be reading this page in its entirety. Can you see that? Yeah? Okay. Go ahead, pause that and read it. Okay? There were other goals that the Jesuits hoped to reach with World War I. All the great nations, including the United States, were war-weary, devastated, and mourning their dead. Peace was the great universal desire. Thus, when it was proposed by Woodrow Wilson to set up a League of Nations to ensure peace, all the great nations jumped on the bandwagon without ever stopping to read the fine print in that insurance policy. This is a quote from the book Myron Fagan, The Illuminati and the Council on Foreign Relations Take Lecture. After World War I, an attempt was made to set up a one-world government 
and the League of Nations was established. Senator Henry Cabot Lodge Sr. prevented the United States from joining the League of Nations. The Jesuits plot to create a one-world governing body from which they could control the world was stopped only temporarily. This part of the Jesuits' plan had to wait another 27 years for a repeat performance when the Second World War would result in the United Nations. But we look at yet another reason for the papacy's delight in the First World War. Let us look briefly at President Woodrow Wilson. Wilson was controlled and dominated by Jesuit Colonel Edward Mandel House. Wilson said, Mr. House is my second personality. <laughs> he is my independent self. He is my independent self. That's kind of scary, isn't it? His thoughts and mine are one. Charles Seymour, the intimate papers of Colonel House, Houghton Mifflin, Volume 1, page 114-115. For seven long years, Colonel House was Woodrow Wilson's other self. That's just creepy. It was House who made the state for the cabinet. It was, it was House who made the slate for the cabinet. Beg your pardon formulated the first policies of the administration and practically di directed the foreign affairs of the United States. We had indeed two presidents. For one, super ambassador. He talked to emperors and kings as an equal. He was the spiritual generalissimo of the administration. George Varick, the strangest, strangest friendship in history, Woods, Woodrow Wilson and Colonel House, uh, Liver Wright Publishers, page 18, 19, and 33, quote in the book that uh, that's from. Varick says on pages 106 to 108 that while Wilson was running for re-election in 1916 on a platform of because he kept us out of war, House was negotiating a secret agreement with England and France on behalf of Woodrow Wilson, that America would enter the war immediately after the election. House was also intimate with the power centers of money and power in Europe. House had close contacts with both J.P. Morgan and the old banking families of Europe. G. Edward Griffin, The Creature from Jekyll Island, American Opinion Publishing, page three, uh, 239. Edward Mandel House totally controlled Woodrow Wilson. House was a book Jesuit carrying out their every desire. He used, Woodrow, he used Wilson as a puppet to create the League of Nations for the Jesuits. Wilson was nothing more than Rome's tool to do their bidding. Another reason for World War I was to pay back Germany for its opposition to the papacy and the Jesuits in the 1860s and 1870s. Germany was the birthplace of the hated Lutherans, which interestingly enough that today the Lutherans have signed a compact or whatever with Rome, and Rome has basically welcomed the Lutherans back into Catholicism. Right down the road, there's a Lutheran church, <laughs> church building right down the road. They're Catholics. You call them that, they don't like that. And it's strange that the Lutherans themselves don't seem to know about how they signed something with Rome, and Rome basically welcomed them back in to the flock. Very interesting. But nonetheless, let's continue. Twice during this time, Chancellor Otto von Bismarck led Germany, known as Prussia, to military victories over the Jesuit-controlled countries of Austria in 1866 and France in 1870. Bismarck also outlawed the Jesuit order with 
the Kalu Kalutra Kampf Law in 1872. These crimes against Rome and the Jesuits had to be repaid in kind. Hence, many thousands of Germans were slain in the bloodbath of World War I. Germany was also the country most affected at the end of the war. The vict and, exactly. See, the Jesuits destroyed Germany only to build it back up with Hitler to uh, go after the Jews to establish the New World Order, as they like to call it. Okay. The victorious nations of Europe used the Treaty of Versailles to plunder Germany. The treaty imposed such, such an unfair burden of war reparations on Germany that when the French leader Clemenceau was asked by the press what the leaders had given the world by the treaty, he said, we have guaranteed another war in 20 years. The Germans agreed to the terms because they were weak and defeated, but they swiftly rebuilt and attempted to pay back their enemies for the debt given to them after World War I. That payback was World War II. After World War I ended, the Jesuits did not get what they wanted. Woodrow Wilson and Edward Mandel House managed to get them the League of Nations. But it failed miserably because the United States did not join. Therefore, Another war was necessary, a war so devastating that the people would cry out for a united nations. This was one of the goals of World War II. We will look at this and other reasons for World War II in our next chapter. Hence, the Hegelian principle, argument, counter-argument, control the outcome, get the outcome that they wanted. They played both sides, see. But they started with the League of Nations, but it failed. Hence, the second one, which is here today, okay? Uh, all right. We are going to be reading in this. We're going to be reading from where my finger is. Okay, let's see. From where my finger is down, Okay. From where my finger is on my left, on my right hand here, right here, down from there, I'm going to be reading this entire page. And also, we are going to read up to where my finger is on this page right here. Okay? Verbatim, <laughs> best I can. <laughs> the papacy was still trying to exterminate Orthodox Christians in Serbia in the late 1990s. The papacy used the United States, United States as their bully in that conflict to bomb Syria. The real butcher of the Balkans is the Pope and the Catholic Church. Not Slobodan Milosevic. They are trying, they are trying to wrong person for war crimes. Another Jesuit goal of World War II was to make things so bad for the Jewish race that they would want to return to Palestine. And of course, that's, in, that's fulfilling scripture. The Jews were brought back to their homeland in unbelief. I uh, did a video on that, uh, Israel 1948, eight, what was God doing, okay? They were brought back there in unbelief, okay? Fulfillment of prophecy, just to re remember, okay? Near the end of World War I, the Balfour Declaration was signed, enabling the Jews to go back home to Palestine. This was to be their permanent home. However, many Jews had found success in various parts of the world and did not want to return. When World War II and the Jewish Holocaust occurred, the persecuted Jews longed for a place to call home, and many returned to Palestine. And also, too, about the Holocaust, you've got to remember... The Holocaust was a judgment upon the Jewish people. Because you look at what the Jewish people were doing right before the Holocaust. 
On that, you can read the book Night by Eli Wiesel. Very, very good book. Sad, hard book to read. Uh, very hard book to read. But um, you'll see that what the Jewish people were doing, reading their Talmud, getting involved in Kabbalistic magic, uh, very similar to what Israel today is doing. Hence, another Holocaust, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. Okay? Let's continue this. In 1948, Israel was declared to be a sovereign nation according to Cooney's book, The American Pope, page 187. Francis Spellman, there's a wicked Jesuit if there ever was one, had been the deciding factor in getting Israel accepted as a sovereign state. And then, as a dear friend of mine asked, why would the Jesuits use Hitler to annihilate the Jews and then have Jesuit Cardinal Francis Spellman provide a home in Palestine for them? Watch carefully. The Vatican has sought to destroy the Jews for thousands of years. Yes! Roman Catholicism is replacement theology. Replace the Jews. To be antichrist is one to be against and two to replace. Okay? You have to remember that. The extermination of the Jew is what Satan's about. Because where did Christ come from? The Hebrews, the Jews. That line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That chosen line of Shem. Okay? Behind the Zionist banner, there was to be found the ancient messianic hope for the coming of a global theocracy, as predicted by all the seers and prophets of Zion. It was to be a theocracy in which Jehovah, not Christ, was to be king. The scepter of the creation of such a theocracy has haunted the inner chambers of the Catholic Church from her earliest inception and is still and still is a dominant fear. In Vatican eyes, therefore, the millenarian yearning for a global Hebrew theocracy re represents a deadly threat to the eschatological teachings of the Catholic Church. Absolutely it does. When translated into concrete political terms, such a view spells not only rivalry, but implacable enmity. Avril Manhattan, the Vatican, Moscow, Washington, Alliance. Ozark Books, page 169-170. Yeah, trying to get a copy of that. <laughs> On the surface, the nation of Israel and Palestine seemed to be a grand opportunity for the Jews to be able to have their own country. And today, get a load of this, However, what has been the result of the Jews returning to Palestine? Look, look what's happening right now, December 13th, 2021, in Israel. What has happened ever since Israel returned? They returned in unbelief. That's the, that's the key thing. They returned in unbelief in fulfillment of prophecy. Okay? But what has happened? Since they were granted sovereign status in 1948, the Jews have been in one ravaging battle after another with the Arabs, the Ishmaelites, the sons of Ishmael. Many Jews have died, just as the Jesuits hoped and knew would happen. With the Jews return to Israel and Palestine, the Jesuits hoped to cause such bloodshed in that part of the world that the world would cry out for a peacemaker to come to the region. And who would be that peacemaker? That's a trick question. But for those of you who do not know, that is that man of sin, the son of perdition and accurately referred to as the Antichrist. And excuse me, dear friend, show me the Antichrist in Scripture. Show it to me. Show it to me. Show it to me. Okay? 
But who is that peacer, peacemaker, that man of sin, the son of perdition? The Pope of Vatican City, of course. The Jesuits have long wanted to restore the Pope's temporal power. When the Pope is given Solomon's throne in Jerusalem, the long-awaited goal will be accomplished. The war on terrorism that originated September 11th, 2001, which <laughs> Darge Bush calls a crusade, warning, could certainly aggravate the trouble in that region to bring about the reign of the pontiff from Jerusalem. The Jesuits failed in their attempts to have a world governing body following World War I. They accomplished their sinister goal after World War II, following the war. The weary, aching world was conditioned to accept an international government, and the United Nations was born. Now, put this in con uh, context to, with today. People are, they have the um, corona, which is a crown. They have delta, which is a pyramid. And they have Omicron, the Transformer, no, an eye, hmm. after the star constellations. Very interesting to find that out. Very interesting. Hmm. But, see, a continual weakening. See, an open world war is not happening at the moment, but yet it is, covertly through the psychological operation known as the Poison Crown that the Jesuits created, battering people with variant after variant after variant and all this nonsense, weakening people, people wanting a savior. Since the creation of the United Nations in 1945, this so-called peacekeeping body has failed miserably in keeping peace around the world. <laughs> Why? Because keeping peace is not their purpose, even though they continue to claim that it is. And incidentally, you know the United Nations has a YouTube channel? <laughs> there are presently some 83 different wars around the world. However, it has certainly been instrumental in suppressing liberty-loving people. Katanga and Rhodesia are just two examples of nations crushed by UN forces. The United Nations has worked tirelessly to restore the temple power of the papacy, its purpose from the beginning. To bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition, to rule the world by the volition of a single man. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to be reading to start verses 3 on to verse 9. Covered this in several videos before, but we need to get back on track and pay attention to that kind of stuff out there. Preach the gospel to whom will listen. Okay? We need to get back on track, brethren. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 9. Follow me along in the scriptures, please. Now, as we just saw, the, the whole thing of the United Nations, the whole thing of the United Nations is the stage for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to come up and to be the one world ruler. Okay, and when we get to some of this, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the whole purpose, okay? That's the whole purpose. The League of Nations was a failed attempt by the Jesuit order. The, the United Nations, which we have today, was the brainchild of the Jesuit order. To bring about that man of sin, the son of perdition, to have it as his stage, okay? And remember, that man of sin is going to be intrinsically linked unto the Catholic Church, which is Satan's church. It's going to be a pope, I believe, still to this day. I still believe he's going to be a pope. If he's not going to be a pope, he's definitely going to be some kind of celibate type of individual linked to the Vatican. Okay? Absolutely. But, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 9. 
Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Those who they say they those who are saying that they are of us, but they are not of us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's the falling away. Not that saved, born again, people of the church of the living God falling away from doctrines that they held. That is possible, yes. But the falling away, the falling away. Okay, I've touched on this many times. We're going to touch on it again. Okay. But the falling away is uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Look, look at today, okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Hence, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's the falling away. Absolutely. Okay? And look what's happening. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Again, the son of perdition, the abomination that make it desolate. Okay? Those are proper scriptural titles for this individual, not the Antichrist. Dear man, find the Antichrist, the Antichrist in scripture, you know. We go on about the Great Tribulation. There is no the Great Tribulation. Same thing with this, okay? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Aha! The third rebuilt temple the third rebuilt temple, which is why the Vatican wants Jerusalem. So the Jews can rebuild that temple, and then that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to waltz in there, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's why after the church of the living God be redeemed, caught up, okay? And the time of Jacob's trouble commences. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, okay? The church of the living God is not going to be there. Christians will be, yeah. But those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we, we get caught up, okay? We're not going to go through that time. Christians will. Those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, Church of living God, we get caught up, buddy. Be aware of that, okay? But see, he's going to go forth conquering and conquer. We're going to look at that today, too, okay? And doing that, he's going to leave a wake of destruction. Talked about this with you many times before, okay? Going to leave a wake of destruction in his midst. But that time is going to be allotted, allotted for the Jews to rebuild their third temple. So he can waltz right in and say, ah. Here I am. Deceive many. Let's continue. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That man of sin, the son of perdition, will re be revealed in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not before. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Absolutely. Look around you. Okay? Only he who now letteth will let. He who now letteth will let. Let is hindering, stopping. Okay? Until he be taken out of the way. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He's not going anywhere. 
the he that is being talked about is his body, the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Okay? We, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, on this earth today, his ambassadors having the word of reconciliation, the authorized version of the scriptures, and the ministry of reconciliation, okay? We are Christ's ambassadors. And as long as the church of the living God is on the earth, that man of sin cannot be revealed. For the mystery of, iniqui of iniquity doth already work. Absolutely. I mean, come on, take a look around you. Okay? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And, and here's what a lot of these, as they call themselves, post-trivers, <laughs> weirdos, here's what these guys really just can't handle. And then shall that wicked, that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. We get caught up, that man of sin, the son of perdition. We get caught up, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Okay. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now we're going to stop right there for right now. Let's let's get a little refresher. Let's a little bit about this leader, this guy, this hotshot who's going to come along, okay? Daniel chapter 8, just very quickly. We've covered these many times before. But see, Satan wants us distracted right now. Satan wants us to get our, our attention away from what is going on, away from preaching the gospel, okay? From doing the work that our Lord has called us on to, no, Satan wants us to butt heads and to take our eyes off of what's going on. Okay, so Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 and verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, fierce countenance, body, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The mighty and the holy people, those set apart, the Jews, okay? And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to, po to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. To peace shall destroy many. The United Nations is all about peace. There's going to be coming a guy saying, peace, peace. Daniel chapter 11, verses 20 on to verse 24. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes, in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. We need peace right now, don't we? Look at what's going on, all this devastation. We need peace. And with the arms of a flood, arms of a flood, arms of flood, maybe many peoples, as referenced in Revelation chapter 17. Hmm. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overthrown, overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. And he shall come up and shall become strong with a 
small people. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the provenance. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his fathers' fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, and spoil, and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices, even, uh, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. His fathers, okay, he's going to be a Jew. Yes, that man of sin, the son of perdition, absolutely. He is going to be what he hates the most, a Jew. Absolutely. He might be a hybrid of um, kind of like, um, you know, the Ishmaelites, the um, uh, union between Shem and Ham, okay? Might be, might be. But nonetheless, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be Jewish. Because the Jews will not accept a Gentile Messiah. There's no way. There's no way. Go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Found this very interesting. Or uh, Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verses 9 on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Is that, is that possibly because of the mark of the beast? Now, our Lord was speaking specifically of the Jewish people at the time in the in the book of Jeremiah before um, Nebuchadnezzar came and devastated Jerusalem, absolutely. But do you, do you think this is as far as that goes? Come on now. Hmm. Let's continue. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to make the Holocaust of the Jewish people look like nothing. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, Every one is given to covetousness. And James talks about that in James chapter 4, I believe it is. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace. When there is no peace, he'll come in peaceably, and through peace will destroy many. Hmm. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask, and ask for the old paths. See, at some time, at some point during the time of Jacob's trouble, the Jews, the a remnant of those Jews are going to get it. And they're going to realize that we, the church of the living God, who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures, those who are truly saved, we're telling them the truth all along. They're going to get it. It's going to be very small, very small remnant of them. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also I sent watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Hmm. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 13. 
Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 10 on to verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 10 on to verse 16. Because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying, Peace. And there was no peace. Saying, Peace. Was no peace. Hmm. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you? Where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. Hmm. Fury. His anger, his wrath, his rage. The time of Jacob's trouble. Where God's wrath is going to be poured upon this world for seven years. Hmm. <laughs> And there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that, this found, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that... I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her. And there is no peace except the Lord God. And of course, 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. But of the times, uh, verses 1 on to verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I truly believe when they shall say, peace and safety, we need peace and safety. Is that not what they're saying right now? Hmm? And, you, and we have to remember, we have to remember, who is the little G God of this world? Jesus Christ, God our Father, he is God, okay? He controls all. He is allowing Satan to run things down here for judgment upon this earth, okay? But we, the church of the living God, are here hindering, letting, okay? But we, you have to remember, you have to remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1, on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, but by manifestation of the truth living our lives in accordance with the scripture, daily examining ourselves in the light of scripture, okay? Living our talk through our walk, okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom... The little g, God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Okay? Now, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. We've covered this many times before. Going over it again. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Paul addressing us, the church of the living God, but making a comparison. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Were dead, those who are saved. We were dead in trespasses and sins. You're not saved, you're dead in trespasses and sins. The God of this world, Satan, has blinded your eyes. Blinded your mind, excuse me, okay? Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that spirit of Antichrist. The spirit, lowercase s, that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that spirit of Antichrist among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, because Satan and everything he's about is about flesh, okay? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You hear the true gospel and reject that you're, ch you're children of wrath. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is against you, Okay? You're of those that are going to be taken and destroyed during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right? Now go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 on to verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts. Youthful lusts. Going after flesh, okay? Youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A pure heart. A heart that belongs to the Lord. Not a heart that's divided between lust of the flesh and covetousness of this world. But just wanting to use the Lord as a scapegoat to cover your rear end only. Hold your place here and go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Flee also youthful lusts. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verses 9 on to verse 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, picking up at verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. To be foolish is to live, act as if there is no God. And if you are living and acting as if there is no God, you will come up with a lot of unlearned questions. And we're told to avoid them. Knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. We are to contend for the faith, but strive? Mm. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him who are taken captive by him at his will. 
We are in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You're rejecting the gospel. You're opposing yourself. You are your worst enemy. And what for? Because you think you're good? See, you reject the truth of the scripture. You reject the gospel. You reject our Lord Jesus Christ. You're opposing yourself. You're doing nothing but harm to yourself. And you also got to remember, like it says in John, in Luke chapter 4, in Luke chapter 4, we got to remember, for judgment, Satan has been allowed to be the ruler of this world. Luke chapter 4, verses 5, under verse 7, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And how many out there have done that very thing, sold themselves unto the devil to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. And look at how well they're doing amid troubled times. And also, too, got to remember John chapter 12, what our Lord said of Satan himself. Okay, John chapter 12, verse 31. Just one verse. John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. What does that mean? Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Acts 26, verses 13 on to verse 18. Paul giving the rundown on his Damascus road uh, when the Lord appeared to him and broke him. <laughs> Acts chapter 26, verses th uh, 13 on to verse 18. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? See, we are his bones and his flesh. We are his ambassadors. See, they can't get to Christ himself but they can get to his body and if they get to his body they're attacking Christ see Paul bore in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus they couldn't get to Jesus himself but they could sure take it out on his ambassador couldn't they that's why they hate us because we who are of the church of the living God saved born again converted new creatures in Christ Jesus the Lord lives within us, that seal until the day of redemption, that circumcision made without hands, because we came to him on his terms, broken of our self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, contrition, because it's our fault and we deserve it, and having fear of the Lord that he could put us in hell, and cried out to him for his mercy. You have to get saved according to his conditions, not your own. Okay? That's why the world hates us, okay? But he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me? Per persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, and that they may receive forgiveness of sins 
an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. From the power of Satan unto God, who are taken captive by him at his will, snared in his snare. And see, with the death, burial, and resurrection, and opening the way of salvation to not only the Jew first, but on to us Gentiles. Now go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Picking up at verses 4 on to verse 11. But ye brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. There's a darkness that can be felt out there, isn't there? Especially when someone receives the steel of the Jesuit poniard and they have that thing, that VMAT2 inhibitor that affects the pineal gland, Okay. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Drunken with the wine from the Vatican. Okay? But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Breastplate protects your heart, and the helmet, the hope of salvation, covering your head, knowing that you are saved of the church and living God, knowing that you are going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, God's wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Okay? The catching away is happening soon, I believe. How soon? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we're going to make it 10 more years it's possible we can, but I mean, just the way things are happening. The catching away is approaching far more sooner than later than it was even a year ago with what is happening. Okay. I believe personally that we'll be here till at least 2025. I personally do not believe that we will be here uh, around 2030. I could be wrong, of course, but I do believe that the catching away will be happening much sooner rather than later. We all hope so. We all hope so. We all hope so. And we got to remember too, see, once we, the church of the living God, is caught up, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 2, and I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a singular crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. A bow with no arrows. He sat on a white horse and had a single crown, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. He had no arrows in his bow. He would come in peaceably using flatteries. And we, the church of the living God, are caught up in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. That's the redemption of the purchase of possession. Like I said, I do believe that the catching away will be coming very soon. How soon? I don't know. Again, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Like I told you, I personally don't believe that we're going to be making it 10 more years. 
I don't believe that. Could be wrong. I hope not. But you got to remember, ever since the beginning of this dispensation, things are rapidly approaching. Things are rapidly coming to pass. Okay? The redemption of the purchased possession is coming more sooner than later. Time is now for you to get saved because you don't want to have to go through this time period that's coming, the time of Jacob's trouble. And now go to Revelation chapter 13. Go to Revelation chapter 13. Again, see how we did that? Picking up at verse 10. Revelation chapter 13, picking up at verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was, he was healed. That, excuse me. So we see in Revelation chapter 13, we already looked at it, the dragon, the beast, and this individual that is being talked about is called the false prophet. So the, so the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. One, two, three. A three-person God that makes one God. The dragon, the beast, the false prophet. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Lying signs and wonders. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power given and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And here, here is the condemnation, the damnation during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because when he's going forth conquering and to conquer all the economies of the world are going to be destroyed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 666, www, World Wide Web, okay? And there's something to do about, there's a 666 seat in the Parliament of England, there's some kind of, or something like that, okay? I think it has more to do with the World Wide Web. And then you find out, and by the way, thank you for this, brother, that Elon Musk guy, uh, they're, that neural link thing that they, you know, it's about the size of a quarter. They remove a piece of it out of your head and put it in there so that you have a computer chip in your brain. Okay. Is that a precursor to in their forehead? Can't put it past them. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go forth conquering, conquering and to conquer and going to destroy all world economies to where you have to get the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead or else you won't be able to eat or do anything. What happens when you get that? Uh, Revelation 14 verses 9 on the verse 12. 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever means anybody. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, people, it's faith and works, okay? And what you have today is you have these devil, Jesuit coadjutor, Catholic scum, easy believism heretics, trying to tell you that you are saved just by you believing. You're a thief and a robber. You go up some other way, you don't go through the door. You save yourself by your own belief, okay? The reason why they are doing that. And they a lot of them claim to be dispensational. But see, again, salvation changes within the dispensations, people. Okay? You've got to remember that. You have got to remember that. So what these guys are doing, they're trying to drill into your head that you save yourself by your own belief. Hence, it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. So when we, the church of the living God, get redeemed and you're left behind, you're going to have these people calling themselves King James Bible believers. They're going to be telling you, you just believe. You have to, if you don't provide for your own, you're an infidel. Well, what about this, Mark? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. You're saved because you just believed. See, that is their end game. That's why they are coming out so viciously right now with the uh, easy believism heresy, the love gospel heresy, and also this work salvation her heresy, um, better known as lordship salvation. Guys like Comfort, MacArthur, uh, Washer, guys like that, okay? Those are the guys who teach that. All of those have one thing in common, Self. It's what you do. Easy believism. You save yourself by your belief. The love gospel. There's something in you that is in your flesh that was worth dying for. For worth God dying on the cross for. Hence, you're good. Lordship salvation. You give up this, this, and this. And then you go to Jesus and he may grant you repentance. See, all three of them have self the center. And you're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble with that? And you got to remember too, okay? The United Nations was created by the Jesuit order. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, he is going to be intrinsically linked with the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, we, we have to. We have to. Revelation chapter 17. We have, to, we have to read this. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication kings of the earth, the United Nations, the United Nations as created by the Jesuit order. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman, mother church, sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, the true colors of the Vatican, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filth, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. 
and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. See, this is describing Roman Catholicism, Satan's church. Okay, But see, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, it's not going to last. Okay, Eventually it's going to be destroyed. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be utilizing this system that the Jesuits have created for him to step into. See, the Jesuits have created all of this. Satan's church has created all of this for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to step into and to take control of it after we, the church of the living God, have been redeemed, caught up. The body of Christ has been caught up. Okay? That's the whole point. And looking at verses 15 on to verse 18, where it says in verse 1 about the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I always make this point, okay? Because remember how we saw about with the arms of a flood? Remember we read that? And he saith unto me, verses 15 on to verse 18, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Oh, like the United Nations. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. So you see, they're going to end up hating the whore. Roman Catholicism. Isn't that something? So the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, all this time has been working feverishly to put into play this system which they are which we are seeing come to pass before our eyes. That that man of sin, the son of perdition, will just step into. And once they once Roman Catholicism, Catholic, listen to me, once your church has served its purpose, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Again, verse 18. It's not talking about the rabbis in Jerusalem. It's definitely not talking about the American Jesuit president. It's talking about Rome. Everybody's going to Rome to seek an audience with Francis, who isn't really the true pope. He's the white pope. The real pope, the one who controls everything, is Sosa, Arturo Sosa. And Francis, being a Jesuit, is subservient onto Sosa. So all they're doing, see, what's going to happen is that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to step in to that rebuilt temple. I am God. And he's going to look like the Catholic Jesus. And hey, since Jesus is here, look at how Catholicism has messed everything up. It's gonna, I, I bet he'd say something like, well, you have made a mockery of the church. Here I am. I am here now officially. I am the one. I am God. And because, and there, it says they're going to give it on to the beast. The ultimate end of Catholicism is destruction. The ultimate end of Satan is destruction. You're on a, you're, you, you Catholics, you are on the Titanic. The Titanic, which was purposely sunk by the Jesuit order because those who were on the Titanic opposed the Federal Reserve Bank, the Pope's Bank. And in, very interestingly enough, it was what? December 1913, 
when the Federal Reserve Bank came into being. The month of December. And with the establishment of the Federal Reserve Bank, World War I, World War II, war after war after war after war after war. And the Jesuits using their puppet. My country, America. Revelation 18, verses 21 on to verse 24. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Ultimate destruction of Babylon, Roman Catholicism. And beware if people say, well, it's actually the real Babylon. No, it's Roman Catholicism. Henry Morris said that it was actually Babylon, uh, Iraq or whatnot. No, it's Roman Catholicism. It's the Vatican. Beware of some. Stephen Anderson says Babylon is America. <laughs> it's Rome. Be aware of that, people. And the voice, check this out. Check this out. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and in trump and trumpeteers shall be heard no more at all in thee. You know, an aspect of predictive programming, and a dear friend of mine brought this up, and I looked into it. You're right. You know that movie by Steven Spielberg, Traitor to His People, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? The arrival of aliens are always prefaced with the sound of trumpets. You look into that. Trumpets. Aliens. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure that's just, you know, being conspiratorial. And, you know, let's continue. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Jesuits. For by thy sorceries. Pharmacaea, where we derive the word pharmacy. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. The inquisitions, okay? The programs and stuff like that. The um, creation of communism in the reductiones, okay? This is talking about the Vatican, Roman Catholicism, but by their sorceries, for by thy sorceries, pharmacaea, drugs. The mark of the beast, I truly believe, is going to be of a pharmaceutical nature. You know, inject it. And also in their forehead, maybe, maybe it is Elon Musk's, um, whatchamacallit, that neural link. Okay, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see from up there. But by thy sorceries. <laughs> you look in America, the poison, the sorcery, witchcraft, drugs that are being promulgated right now. <laughs> what is it? What, 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 what was it? 60% of America? Or what? I forget what this statistic is. But like 60% of Americans uh, are on pharmacy drugs. Sorcery, witchcraft. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? But you see, all of this is to bring about that man of sin, the son of perdition. I'm going to read some stuff from you, for you from this book. Um, I know of uh, one uh, dear brother of mine who has picked this up again. Go ahead and get this book. This is <laughs> very good book. Very good book. Going to um, pick and choose some things for you, okay? Going to pick and choose a few things for you from this uh, book. 
Okay, we're going to start here. I'm going to start here by reading these pages. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay. I'm going to be reading both these pages onto you. Pause it, zoom in, and read it. And also, going to be reading up to the red on this page. Pause it and read it. See what, see what I wrote there? <laughs> okay. And as this book says, the Jesuit conspiracy, the secret plans of the order. This is being put into practice right now as we speak. Okay. So, verbatim, best I can. <laughs> I am sure we shall all admit the necessity of invoking the people in the thickest and most inextricable network of devotional practices so that they may become docile in proportion to their stupidity. Devotional practices. Oh, by getting one, two, three appointments with the steel of the Jesuit poignard? Devotional practices of social distancing. <laughs> Remember, the psychological operation called the poison crown is a religion. You need faith in it. Okay? It's a religion that they've created. But all this, though not with its, without its value, is not yet enough. What is of all things indispensable is an active, indefa indefatigable, perpetual concurrence like this which now animates us collectively. Men of large and bold intellects <laughs> intent on continually advancing the progress of our work unless the church have the aid of a vast brain to elaborate for it a truly Catholic scheme, can it ever see, ever, can it expect ever to see mankind universally subject to one soul chief? That man of sin, the son of perdition. They, the Jesuits admit, are admitting that, yeah, we're working to bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition. Now, skipping a bit. From the moment I beheld heretical governments stretch forth a hand to aid in the reestablishment of the Holy See, I believed the time was coming when they would at last swallow the bait and begin to catholize their states but it is only too evident that I was deceived. Nevertheless, a few years ago, some Roman princes, having accompanied a prince of Germany on a visit to our most celebrated monuments, upon his asking for some explanations on a historical subject, there was something said about certain ferocious beasts being tamed by their masters to such a degree that the said masters did not fear to place their heads within the animal's mouths. I observed to these personages that a narcotic powder frequently employed would probably produce these marvelous effects. Uh, verse 23, Revelation 18. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Hmm. As this remark was accompanied with a somewhat subtle smile, the heretic prince stood, understood me and replied, Reverend Father, have you not some narcotic powder? Narcotic powder, yeah. For all those wild beasts pointing to the passing crowds? 
for they seem to be for they seem to me very far from being tamed. Verse 15 in Revelation 17. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Emboldened by this, by this observation, I answered, from the moment your populations were delivered from the Catholic so profix, and you yourselves broke so many salul salutary checks upon them, from that moment they have been as turbulent as madmen. Because remember, unto the Catholics, there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. It is just as if the narcotics given to those animals were to be discontinued for a while. Their astonishing tameness, which attracts such crowds of curious observers, would then be at an end, and they would resume all their habitual ferocity. This led us on to further discussion, and I have reason to believe that the prince went away convinced of the efficacy of our remedies to cure this very inconvenient popular malady. Get a load of that. Get a load of that, okay? But in order that hints of this kind may have more considerable results, we require a greater number of instruments. A lot of coadjutors working for the Vatican. You see them all over here on YouTube and on other platforms. I return, then, to the necessity of having some of our initiated in the cloisters, cloisters, and of getting rid of some of these cardinals without thought. These popes without capacity and of a host of bishops without nerve or energy. See, this is talking about how the Jesuit order basically has overtaken Catholicism. See, nowadays, when you say Catholicism, you might as well say Jesuit, because the Jesuits run Catholicism. The Jesuits are Catholicism today. Wasn't always such. No, it wasn't. But today, the Jesuits are Catholicism. Look at Jesuit Francis, subservient to Jesuit Pope Arturo Sosa. Okay? and who are totally ignorant of the spirit of the age. Some people like to say, well, Francis is ignorant of the... No, he isn't. He's purposely doing that. Francis is acting a fool purposely as orders by his Pope, Arturo Sosa. Okay? For our plan will be nothing but a dream until we can actually bring about these changes. These changes. Changes of... Deep infiltration. These changes of taking over Catholicism. Catholicism was never of God from the get-go. But you got to remember, the Jesuits are Catholicism today. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay? Do not forget that. Before the hierarchy can exercise any imposing influence, it must have in its upper ranks men of power to conceive and of energy to bring their conceptions into action. Men who are capable of reducing other men under the power of a vast and unfathomable political wisdom, temporal and spiritual. You see, you know, the in Catholic paintings, their son of perdition, you know, their Jesus doing this. The peace sign, spiritual and temporal. That's what that means, okay? Who would then dare look on our syst who would then dare to look our system in the face? Their system that they are creating for that man of sin. <laughs> Unless the church have the aid of a vast brain, like the brain of Satan, to elaborate for it a truly Catholic scheme, can it expect ever to see mankind universally subject to one sole chief, their system being made 
for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to step into? Okay? The United Nations is the beginning. I ask you, is there anything approaching to this in the men whose office it is to guide us? Fools that they are. They would have us look upon them as giants. Man's whole strength is in his intellect. Get a load of that. See, the pleasures of the mind, the sins of the mind, the worship of the mind, the worship of self. Man's whole strength is in his intellect. This is coming from Jesuits. Okay? The Jesuits say, man's whole strength is in his intellect. Mary Baker Eddy, that harlot who's burning in hell, she said that mind is Messiah. The easy believism heretic are saved by their belief. But these pillars of the church have nothing strong about them but their animal temperament. What would be the fate of those rotten voluptuaries, these ignoramuses, buried in purple and in Inui, and then give some Latin thing, which I'm not even going to attempt to read. But for our unconquerable energy and intrepidity, get a load of this. We have then a Herculean task to accomplish, to renovate a triple sphere, sphere, triple sphere, hmm. as well as the chief who governs it. Because right now you have Francis, who is a Jesuit, and of course the superior general, Arturo Sosa, the deadliest man on earth. Sosa is subservient, um, Sosa. Francis is subservient unto Sosa, okay? And when, a and when a considerable mass shall have undergone a complete transformation, complete transformation since 2019 with the Poison Crown uh, psychological operation, hmm. it is then that a pope who shall bear within him our idea, already ripened and developed, may employ the means and resources which shall have been accumulated by our strenuous exertions during a century, perhaps, or more. Again, he may launch forth his anathemas, his interdictions, and his omnipotent decrees to shake thrones and to humble forever the pride of insolent monarchs. And I wrote here, wow, son of perdition, anyone? Catholic, listen to me. Your whole system, your whole religion is to bring about that man of sin, the son of perdition. Your whole church, your whole system is about bringing in that man of sin, the son of perdition. Bringing in Satan himself on the earth. That's what your church, your system is about. Please, wake up. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. All right. Now we're going to do a little bit more reading here. We still, this might be two parts, because still got quite a bit of scripture to go through, okay? But now we're going to be reading this highlighted section right here on this page, okay? This page, the highlighted only from where my finger is, okay? <laughs> we are going to read most of this on these pages. Okay. Pause that and read it. Then we're going to finish up
Oh, with right here on this page where the red is. And then we're also going to have to take a look. No, no, that will do. That will do. Okay. So let's read some of this. Okay. So like I said, we're going to read up to right here where the red is. Okay. Now, remember how we looked about in um, Bill Hughes's book about how uh, World War One and World War Two, everybody was, you know, downcast. All this war had done all this stuff. Remember that? Okay. All grew pale at the demand for an ecumenical council, and it is certain that, and it is certain that that of Trent would have been the grave of Rome but for the ability of our company, the Jesuit order. And the Council of Trent was absolutely the brainchild of the Jesuit order. Absolutely. And of course, the Council of Trent is what everybody, everyone in uh, the popes swear to uphold with all the anathemas, okay? We resolute and unswerving succeeded in baffling the multitude of heretics who were eager to attack the very foundations of Catholicism. With history in their hand, they were prepared to question the Bible. Why? Because Catholicism in the Dark Ages kept the scriptures from the common people. And so when the Reformation, God used the Reformation to put the scriptures into that people's hands, they were like, okay, all you guys are saying this and this and this, where is it in scripture? With history in their hand, they were prepared to question the Bible, the fathers, the councils, to trace them from age to age and explore the origin of each institution, dogma, and practice. And they find out that what Catholicism teaches is not from the scriptures. What secrets would then have come to light? Yeah, the symbol of the ancient faith, ancient from Babylon, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, not Nebuchadnezzar, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Nimrod, okay? All the way back from Nimrod, okay? The ancient faith. The, pri the, pri the primitive mode of solving questions by going to devils. The progress of the papal power, the precise date of every innovation and change, the immense chaos of past ages, so well covered until then, would all have been exposed to the eye of day, sifted after this fashion. Nothing would have been preserved but what is expressly supported by some text of Scripture. Amen! The rest would have been remorse, remorselessly burnt as stubble. Yeah! What they're saying is, people having the Scriptures in their hands are able to see that what Catholicism teaches is of Satan and it doesn't line up. Okay? That's what they're talking about. Nor could the Pope have flattered himself with the hope of remaining an honored patriarch. This very title of patriarch, they would have told him, was but a recent invention. Yeah. See, you get the scriptures, not a Bible. Okay, remember, the Catholics are the ones, yeah, the Catholics gave you Bibles. God gave us the scriptures. God gave us the scriptures. Catholics give you Bibles. Yes, they do. Congratulations, Catholic. You didn't give us the scriptures. God gave us the scriptures. See why I'm adamant about making the difference between Bibles and scripture? Now, uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to be skipping a little here. Just a little. Uh, no. No, we won't skip a little. We won't skip a little. There was a general conspiracy against it, bent on reducing it to the measure of what it was when many bishops of the East and even of the West despised it so openly. And when Caprian... Irenaeus and Polycarp 
held it in so little esteem. How many bishops indeed flocked to Trent with hostile intentions? How far might not their boldness have proceeded? Had heresy been permitted to spread freely before them, its freely before them, its pernicious erudition, erudition. But we intrepidly defended the breach, and the young Hydra strove in vain to break into the place. Thus, after three centuries of indefatigable labor. After we had been as a cuirass on the breast of Rome, her enemies determined to tear us thence, and almost succeeded, convinced that as long as we remained, Rome was in, invulnerable. But if Rome in her weakness bent for a time like a palm tree beneath the raging winds, she soon raised her head again. And now, let us trust, she has gained an ascension of strength, that will enable her for the future to defy storm and thunders. And storm and thunder, excuse me. Kings call upon us. They feel the need of our narcotic cup for their people. Uh, Revelation 17, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Hmm. Pharmacaea, sorcery. Kings call upon us. They feel the need of our narcotic cup for the people, but they will drink of it, drink of it themselves also and deeply. We will not, however, forget to bedew its rim with honey. Speaking uh, sweet words. <laughs> but inwardly. Full of dead men's bones. Two principles. Amongst the many we possess. Two principles of inexhaustible power. And attractiveness. Ought to hold the first place in our consideration. And this we must continually call to mind. We must thus argue with men in power. See, temporal and, uh, temporal and um, spiritual. Spiritual and temporal. Okay? Rome is involved in the po politics of the world. Obviously. Okay? That's what they're about. They teach that the Pope has the right to rule the world. Temporally. And spiritually, God on earth. See, setting up that system for the, that man of sin, the son of perdition, to come in. We must argue with men in power, and especially those at court. Heresy having been the cause of all the complications which arose precisely when church and state. It says ad here, but I think they meant and. It's a typo. When church and state were all, state were on the point of entering into a happy alliance, the result of which could not but have been sold, solid, and most satisfactory. It is, the height, it is of the highest importance that we should at length realize what three centuries of anarchy have postponed. As soon then as positive conclusions shall have been laid down, the following should be the two leading principles of a new code devised for the regulation and conservation of the vast interests of the two powers at length united. See, in America, there's supposed to be a separation of church and state. But they want church and state. Get a load of this. Whenever, now think about this in light of what's going on today. Whenever heresy shall dare to disturb the sacred tranquility of the church, religion, whatever may be the nature of its assaults, be they slight or serious, the duty of the state 
shall be to punish them with the utmost rigor as political crimes. Political crimes. The tranquility of the church. The Jesuit order brought about the uh, psychological operation known as the poison crown. And they want everyone to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And what are they saying if you are against the steel of the Jesuit poniard? You're a terrorist, right? Wherever heresy shall dare to disturb the sacred tranquility of the church, whatever may be the nature of its assaults, be they slight or serious, the duty of the state shall be to punish them with the utmost rigor and as political crimes. Political crime to not receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard, as it is in Australia. Reciprocally, whenever revolt shall dare to disturb the sacred tranquility of the state, whatever may be the nature of its attacks, be they slight or serious, the duty of the church shall be to stigmatize them in the face of the nations and to treat them with the same rigor as heresy itself, which is to be crushed by terrible and solemn chastisements. It's the Christian thing to do to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. If Christ were here, he would have you to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. It is your duty as a Christian to obey the dictates of the government that are against the scripture. It is your duty as a Christian to obey the government in every form, especially when it goes counteracts the scriptures. See how they do it? Do you see how they're doing it? How they're doing this? After this, we have only to be logically consistent. And since it is the maxim of the schools that it will not be difficult to contrive that the spiritual power, the omnipotent divinity of the Holy See, shall entirely absorb the temporal power. Only let them give up to us the souls of the people. Kind of like the guy uh, said to Abraham uh, after they had the victory. Uh, the guy of Sodom and Gomorrah said, give me the people, but you take the money. Only let them give up to us the souls of the people. Let kings second us with their encouragement and their wealth and our hierarchy at present winding about like a river shall soon spread wide as the sea. And he saith unto me, verse 15 in Revelation 17, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. and cover hills and mountains. But it is mainly important that we should know how to extinguish one by one the multitude of phosphoric flames that glitter in every direction. We must have the art to accomplish, to accustom the mass of the people to look up to none but our men. Look to the government. Look to Fauci. Look to look to the look to the Catholic Church. See? Let's let's read that. We must have the art, the art of war, the art of deception. We must have the art to accustom the mass of the people to look up to none but our men. And how are they doing that today? Through the media, through the news media. You look to, a lot of you lost people, you look to the news media for your truth. You don't, you don't look to the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, for truth. No. You go to a Christian church building, and what do they tell you? They tell you to bow your knee to the government and roll up the sleeve and bow down and kiss the foot of the Vatican. 
That's what they're telling you to do. And thus, we shall train them for the day when, excited by some crying injustice and an increase of taxes, hello people, or some such cause of discontent, they shall furnish us with an opportunity to hurl forth a thundering manifesto from Rome. A signal of its rupture with all governments and consequently of a decisive and final struggle in which we shall be bravely supported by the innumerable and ardent host which we or our successors shall have so well disciplined. Here. Right here, where my hand is. Pause that and read that. Ingest that. Look what they've been doing through propaganda, through predictive programming, through the news media. Has not this world been disciplined to look up to the Jesuits? Would that we might be certain, but at least we can hope that when that crisis comes, when that crisis comes. And Arturo Sosa said of the Poison Crown psycholo psychological operation, which they instituted, we can never go back. The crisis has come. A considerable portion of the, hier of the hierarchy will have undergone a radical and complete change. Hmm that the loftiest thrones of the sanctuary will be inaccessible to men incapable of understanding us. Where do you go to school? Where do you get, you don't have a doctorate. You don't have a piece of paper on your wall. You have to be a professional. That bishops and cardinals well, well know how to follow up their brave words with braver deeds. And finally, that after so many sacrifices, we may have to glory in a man embodying in his own person the most enterprising popes of past times. A man wearing one of those heads in fashioning with nature expands her compasses to, the, to their full stretch. Dear Catholic, the goal of your church is to bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition. That is the goal of your institution. You need to repent. You need to repent. But see, we got to remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. There are those out there and those of my own family, my brother and sister-in-law, are, are this, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. See how we did that? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Something of the narcotic powder of the Jesuit. that they all might be damned who, be, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Pleasure in unrighteousness. You get the steel of the Jesuit poniard and, uh, with the VMAT2 inhibitor, the Funvax, okay? That goes after the pineal gland, which is right between your eyes, the pineal gland. That's why if you want to knock someone out really good, you hit them really hard there, 
okay? But the pineal gland right there. Remember the Hindus and stuff like that? They put the red dot there symbolizing the third eye, the pineal gland, okay? But see, steel of the Jesuit Panyard affects that. And there are people out there who have been taken by the sorcery, the narcotic powder of the Jesuits. And everybody is looking to them right now, looking for peace. And there is no peace. See how this is all being set up, brethren, people? You brethren, Church of the Living God, you know this, of course. But judgment on these people who are like this. Go to, whoop, 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 go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Whoop. Come on, I'll get there. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 29 on to verse 33. Uh, actually, let's read from verse 24 on to verse 33 in Proverbs chapter 1. They received not the love of the truth. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Why? When your fear cometh as desolation, and, distru and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools who say in their heart there is no God shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools. The prosperity of fools. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I believe this is perfectly describing the New World Order citizen. Fully shot up three times with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Learn a fruit. Believing everything that the Jesuits are feeding them. Questioning nothing. Attacking the church of the living God. Spitting on the word of God and his body. The New World Order citizen. Romans chapter 1. See, all of this that we have been looking at is producing in what we see out there, people, a people ready, a people ready to receive that man of sin, the son of perdition. Romans chapter 1, if I would ever get there, verses 18 on to verse 25. Oh, Brad, that was just in the Old Testament. Yeah. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. You have a spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body, the Godhead. Okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Look at the body of man. The, the, the eye. Evolution cannot explain the complexity of the eye. Millions and billions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Nonsense nonsense because that when they knew God just up here they glorified him not as God 
neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The creature more than the creator. Guess what? Satan is a creature created by God. You're worshiping yourself, your own flesh. Your father is the devil. God shall send them strong delusion. They don't want to believe the truth. Fine, go ahead. Go ahead. Fall for the lies of the Vatican. Fall for all the nonsense going on today. The stage is being set for your Savior to show up after we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed and resurrected. You need to get saved, dear friend. You need to get saved right now. And see, another problem that a lot of this entails is Psalm 50. See, worshiping the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Verses 16 under verse 25. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee? My brother and my sister-in-law are New World Order citizens. They can't stand the talk of Jesus Christ. They can't stand the talk of anything of Scripture. How many of you have known anyone who has gotten a death shot? Okay. The steel of the Jesuit poniard. They can't stand to hear it. Can't stand it. Right? When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker, and hast been partaker with adulterers. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. You are a thief and a robber if you go up some other way but by the door. And you are a thief and a robber if you are easy believism, love gospel, or lordship salvation, Catholic, Hindu, whatever. Okay? You're a thief and a robber. God go through the door, our Lord Jesus Christ. And you go through that door on his terms, broken of self-righteousness, godly sorrow, contrition, and fear of the Lord, and calling upon his name in the fear of the Lord. And hopefully he save you. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Deceiving your own self. I'm saved just because I believe. God loves everybody. God loves me. I was worth dying for. God's going to say, uh, give me repentance because I cleaned up my life. Then came to him. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Right here. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, making God in your own image, thinking he's just like you. And he's not. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and him that ordereth his conversation aright, I will shew the salvation of God. Calling upon the name of the Lord, coming to him on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, it's your fault. You can't blame other people. See, that's your problem. You're not taking personal 
responsibility and accountability for your sins. You, you're still blaming other people, young man, son. You're still blaming other people. That's your problem. It's always this guy. It's always that guy. Personal accountability. That's what godly sorrow is about. And see, being truly broken and taking full responsibility and accountability. Thou art the man. Not him. Not her. Not them. Thou art the man. And unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. Come to him broken. Broken of your self-righteousness. It's your fault. You're the man. Call upon his name and may he save you. Because if you don't say if he don't save you, you're gonna go to hell forever and burn and burn and burn. Psalm 48. Greatly is, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The city of the great king, our Lord Jesus Christ. When he come back at his second coming and rule and reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them. There is as pain as a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Silah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion, and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof, Mark ye well her bulwarks, consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even unto death. Psalm 86. Psalm 86, verses 1 on to verse 10. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me. For I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy, separate, separate, set apart, other. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Are you daily crying unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Church of the Living God? Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods, little g, there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. All nations will come and worship him. Hmm. Go to Joel. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. If you do not know... Where Joel is, <laughs> Joel is Daniel, Hosea, Joel. Joel is right before the book of Amos. Okay? Joel chapter 3. Can you handle this? Joel 
For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Bring all the nations together for judgment. Really? And the pleading there is not like, oh, please, no, as a lawyer pleads his case against the defendant kind of thing. Okay, that's what the pleading is. It's not, oh, please, all you enemies. No, no, he is your judge. He's bringing all these nations together for judgment. He's going to plead against them as a judge. Okay, showing them what they have done wrong, pleading the case against them. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? See, the land grant that's given unto the Jews, which comes to us from Scripture, is far bigger than what they have at the moment. And right now, even my government of America is going for the two-state solution. When God has promised to Abraham that land, which is far bigger than what they have right now. Hmm. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Note, I will render, will you render me a recompense? See. And if ye recompense me, S, C. Recompense with a C, a noun. Recompense with an S, a verb. Swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense, another C, upon your own head. Again, you look in uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary. Recompense is only with an S, I believe it is. Or with, yeah, I think it's, it's only one letter. Mr. Webster botched it there on that one. Okay, let's continue. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples and my temples, my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far off, far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense with the sea upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord has spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your, pr and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Talking about future fulfillment in the time of Jacob's trouble. And that ultimate judgment upon Satan. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. Physically. Okay. The Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ. As king. Okay. And the heathen and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then 
shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through her anymore when the king is on the throne in Jerusalem, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Talking about when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the King of the Jews, comes back and is reigning from Jerusalem on the throne. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Now, remember in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2? Revelation chapter, Re Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Okay? <laughs> that guy on the white horse went forth conquering to conquer. He had one, co uh, one crown and a bow with no arrows. Because he's going to use the system that has already been set up by his church's army, okay? But, see, Satan is a counterfeit. Let's see the real thing. Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 21. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, kind of what we already looked at. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Seven times capital W Word of God appear, all seven times talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. All seven times, okay? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. See, Satan in his little kingdom that he's setting up uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be not even going to last 70, not even really going to make it much past three years, really, when you look at it. I mean, it's going to be a seven-year time period, yeah, but um, his kingdom is going to be rife with problems. Only God can rule the earth, and Satan is not God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Ooh, you mean the destruction of the United Nations? Yeah, United Nations is not going to last. Basically, like the Roman Catholic Church, it was made, it's been made to be eventually destroyed. Catholic, Catholic. Your system, your religion has been made to inevitably be destroyed. You need to get out of it. You need to get out of it now. Let's see. Verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Where his army? 
And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that, walk, that wrought miracles before him, which had with... Eh. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, and with, eh, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. And these both were cast alive in the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat up upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So both the beast and the false prophet. Now, Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 10. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the devil, on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. A thousand years. The kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is during that thousand year reign of Christ. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. It is then when the Sermon on the Mount will be applicable during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That is when the Sermon on the Mount will be applicable during this thousand year reign, the kingdom of heaven, dear people. Okay? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. A huge army. And they went up upon, and they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from out of heaven and devoured them. So this huge army. See, during the kingdom of heaven, you got to remember, brethren, that is when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. During the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. During that time, sin will still be on earth. Sin will still be there. People will still be able to sin during the kingdom of heaven. You, you, you Catholics and those of you coadjutors who know the Sermon on the Mount very well, you know it's all about works. Sin will still be there. Okay? Yes. During the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Okay? Then Satan is loosed. And then he goes out to do what he does, deceive nations. Okay? Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So what do we see there? The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Hey, Catholic, there's your trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay? There's your trinity. There's your trinity. And about Gog and Magog. Go to Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38. Verses 1 on to verse 10. 
Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 1 on to verse 10. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tograma and the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people, against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Talking about what we, this is, the fulfillment of this is what we already looked at in Revelation chapter 20, okay? Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God. It shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take spoil and to take a prey to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, talking about the Jews, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. We read a little bit more uh, past verse 10, obviously. But see, the fulfillment of this is what we have already looked at in Revelation chapter 20. Okay, That is the fulfillment. And how does that end? And when, uh, verse 9 in Revelation 20, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And then we see that the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no place found for them. And there was no place for them, excuse me. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See, you don't get caught up. You're not going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That is for those who who are saved, who get caught up. The great white throne of judgment. That's for you lost people. See, judgment seat of Christ is for those who are saved. Great white throne of judgment. You're going to have a really bad time at the great white throne of judgment, people. Let's finish this in Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. Verses 1 on to 
verses 16 on to verse 21. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Everybody's going to worship the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. And of course, that is uh, talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That is talking about the kingdom of heaven coming up to worship the king and keeping the Feast of Tabernacles because the law is going to be binding and going during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But also, you've got to remember the doctrine of the Sermon on the Mount. That's when... Um, the Sermon on the Mount during the Kingdom of Heaven, that's when that's going to be applicable. You see, dear friend, what is happening right now is that system, that system is being created. It's been being created for centuries and just waiting for the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ, to be redeemed, caught up, and then hence commences the time of Jacob's trouble. See, we, the Church of the Living God, are hindering, letting that from happening. Once we get redeemed, caught up, then all hell breaks loose. And this system that the Jesuit order, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, has been creating for centuries for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to just step into. It's being brought to pass before our eyes. And the United Nations, I believe, is going to be the stage where that first re uh, being revealed of that man of sin, the son of perdition, I believe that's going to be the first stage of it. And you got to remember, brethren, things are not getting better, they're getting worse. They have their um, narcotic powder that they're feeding the people. These people... Brethren, a lot of you, not you who are brethren, you are New World Order citizens. Took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. You need to be aware. You need to know what's coming. Like I said, I believe that the catching away is coming soon. Soon, I do. I really do. When we don't know, but it's something to keep our ears open for and to be diligent for the Lord, to continue to do what he would have us to do, what in ever, whatever capacity it is in. And brethren, we have to remember to be aware and on guard against distractions. Against distractions. Getting our eyes off of what's happening getting our eyes off of um, preaching the gospel, we've got to be aware of distractions, brethren. Because Satan wants us distracted. Satan wants us fighting amongst ourselves. Be aware of that. Okay? But that's going to be it for this video. Um... Well, I know we've gone over some things that we have already done before at length in the past, but it's meat. It's meat. Brethren, we can't let these distractions get in the way. We can't. 
And lately, distractions have been abounding in great abundance, haven't they? And I've even fallen for them myself too as late. But um, for those of you who are not of the Church of the Living God, there will be lots of links in the description box for you. And you Catholics, I know a lot of you are under mind control and you're brainwashed, I get it. But dear Catholic, your entire system, your entire religion is there to bring in the son of perdition. Your entire religion is something that was made to be destroyed and it will not save you. Please repent. Please come to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on his terms. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon him. Because you're not going to make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Most of you won't. Please consider these things. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, thank you unto all you, our brothers and sisters who pray for us, praying for so many of you. Um, thank you. We love you. And thank you to all of you, brethren, who have helped with, um, with uh, this and the next video, willing, Lord willing, coming really soon, will be coming this week um, about Abraham's seed. And many of you, my friends, my brethren, sisters, my wife, many have contributed to what is being put out, uh, well, always have been, but especially this week with what's coming. Um, this is not a one-man show. I have nothing to do with this. This is the Lord's. And I am your servant. You don't serve me. I serve you. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.